Hello everyone, are you ready to see what a frugal stockpile looks like for a family of six? That's what this video is all about. I'm Kristen here at Joyfully Thriving and I know this has been one of the most requested videos, so today I finally have it up for you. It is a peek inside my downstairs food storage or my stockpile that I have. So let me just clarify a couple things before I get to this tour. So this is really what I think a frugal stockpile looks like for a family of six. This was all built within my $475 monthly budget. I do not have separate budgets set aside for stockpiling. This is just part of what I am buying when I see a good deal and sales I'm stocking up then. Now I will clarify there have been two separate instances where I've added to my stockpile Last year, I set aside about $200 and used it to purchase some bigger items like some laundry detergent and canned meat that that was a specific stockpiling purchase. And then on my 40th birthday, a couple months ago, my family surprised me with um, a stockpile party, basically, and they gave me 40 items of different things. So like one sister gave me 40 cans of cream of chicken soup and another sister gave me 40 cans of tomatoes and I got 40 pounds of sugar and just all these different things, which was great. And they knew me so well and I loved it. So if you have a birthday coming up, maybe that's an idea you want to think about. But this really is just a basic food storage, frugal stockpile. These are things that we use on a regular basis. Um, you're not going to see anything crazy or too complex. I really built this over the last, I would say, two years. I've always had a stockpile of some sort, but over the last two years, I have intentionally gone out and started building this stockpile. I made lists. I looked at what our family was really eating. I made myself checklists, and I just started slowly and methodically and intentionally, I think that's an important thing, intentionally building the stockpile. Now, according to my baby steps of stockpiling, I am right at about the three to six mark and within our stockpile at the three to six month mark. Some things are about three months, some are six, some are at a year, but I would say averaging it out, it's in the three to six month range. And my long-term goal actually is to have my family within the six to 12 month range. Now, again, remember, this is also not everything that I use. There are separate tours that I've already done of my upstairs working pantry that I use all the time, and that shows you inside my freezer. And then there's one of our toiletries and cleaning products and all of those type of things. So when you look at those and then you'll watch this video all together, it should give you a good view of what our stockpile is. All right, I know you're curious. This is gonna take a bit. I'm gonna show you through everything that's down here and explain what it is and how much I have and just show it to you all so you can get some ideas. It'll take a bit, so grab a cup of sparkling water, or coffee, chai tea, hot chocolate, whatever your drink is of choice and settle in. And I hope you enjoy the stockpile tour. This part of my stockpile is all in my basement, the bulk of my stockpile. So I'm just gonna take you around. It's kind of in two sections. This is the first section right here, right at the bottom of my steps. It is an unfinished basement and our basement is kind of a mess. So for now, I have it organized and you're just gonna get to see the stockpile section here. So let's start just right here at the beginning. I have some extra laundry detergent that I grabbed here. These are old, um, CD cases and DVD cases that we weren't using and so I just used them here for the stockpile. I have a whole case of this Bactiv. These are disinfecting wipes here and they came as a four pack. They were clearanced at Sam for two dollars right when after you couldn't find disinfecting wipes everywhere. We had all these and they had tons of them. So it was $2 for four packages all together. So I stocked up and it's been great for sending into school and using around the house and I have plenty of those. I don't really have a shelf for this. I showed you this before. This is just that bin of all my paper products, my wax paper, foil, all those type of things. Right next door here, right next to it, is some powdered laundry detergent from Sam's. Now I do kind of consider this a long-term amount. I have three barrels of this and it's powder. This isn't what I typically use, but it's here as a backup and emergency and knowing it's powder, I know it's gonna last for a long, long time. So I just have it here if I need it. 
And then my kids, if you've been around, take a lot of applesauce in their cups. So that's one of the things I have. I do apologize for lights as we do this tour. Like I said, it's an unfinished basement and I'll do my best to make sure you can see everything here. So applesauce cups, thats uh, they're just stacked back here. Each shelf has four stacked in. So I have three shelves of that and a little bit extra. I have a little shelf of baking cocoa. Baking cocoa, as I've discovered, really doesn't expire or go bad. So I have six cans of that. Aldi's the cheapest price to find that. Baking soda and a jar of pickles. All right, I'm going to move you over here and we'll go up to the next shelf. This is my next section right next door here. And I'm just going to quick give you an overview and then I'll talk you through everything here. A lot of people who have seen me with a picture of these asked, where did these shelves come from? And my father-in-law had built these shelves years ago and in this house and left them to us when we bought the house from them. So we have been using those. They're wonderful, sturdy shelves, not very deep, but very sturdy and strong, which is great for storing a lot of my canned goods, which is what I primarily use them for. All right, I'm just going to go back up to the top and we'll talk you through it here of the stockpile in this section. So I have a bin, which is my canning rings. You're not supposed to store your canning jars with rings on typically. So most of the time, once I've canned something, I take it off and just throw them in there until I need them, along with new lids that I haven't used for canning. Some more Clorox wipes. That's a box full of the 9 by 13 baking pans, disposable foil pans. It's about half full, and I do have lids in there as well. I bought those years ago, and they're wonderful when I'm giving a meal to someone there. Then you'll see a lot of my canning jars that are not in use. I have about three sections right now that are not in use, and they are all filled with water, actually. I learned this last year from the Provident Prepper, and it was a great point that I had never thought about. They said your canning jars are taking up, up the same amount of space, whether they're filled or empty, so why not fill them with water and use it as a backup water supply? We are on a well, and so when we lose power, we do lose water. So I thought that was very useful, and I just thought, okay, I can do that. I did not really treat it or anything. I figured this is water for flushing toilets. I did not can it. It's just filled and sitting there on the shelves. And then once a year, I'll rinse them out and refill them and just have that water as backup water then. All right, and you can see what I've canned this year from our garden on these next couple shelves here. We have a little bit. I started using my grandmother's pressure cooker and working at getting good at that. So I have several shelves full of broth. Those are quart jars right there. It was very easy and a good way to get comfortable with using a pressure cooker. We had a great year for jalapenos. So I have a lot of sugared jalapenos. I did cowboy candy this year. So I have that up there. I have a couple of jars of green beans, not many. Those did not do well. But I have lots of pickles that I did this year. That was super easy to do. Our cucumbers grew, grew, our cucumbers grew great. So I have spears and slices. I have quarts and I have pints. You can fit about two quart jars going forward or about three pints if you have those there. And then I, our tomatoes did very well. There's a little bit more broth in the pint jars and then a lot of salsa right there. Again, these go about three back for the salsa. I did not have good access to berries this year, so I have just been buying jam. I do try to always just buy jam that is jam and sugar and pectin, like what exactly what I would can. So that's all the jam we have there. I'm just stacked back there and our favorite flavors. My kids are actually not strawberry jam people. They would prefer raspberry or blackberry, so we have a lot of that with a little bit of blueberry tossed in. I have one more shelf of canned goods this year, some more jalapenos, and like I said, lots of salsa. And then I did can a couple pints of sweet cherries. We had a good deal at Kroger, and I wanted to try doing that. I had a cherry pitter, so I went ahead and canned six pints. It was super easy and very delicious, and I will definitely do that again when we can get those. And so then moving across, there's the last bit of the salsa from this year with a couple empty quart jars. On this shelf, I have some onion soup mix. We like to mix that into hamburgers, so I have a couple boxes of that. Some jars of peanuts, and then true lime. I had bought this on Amazon. It's a just a dried lime that actually helps me drink water. It's a very simple thing, 
to add in and it stores really well and you need just need a shake of it I love it so I keep that on hand and use that when I'm drinking water going down to the next shelf here we'll just continue down the left side and then I'll backtrack so this is where you're gonna start seeing some of the canned goods that our family uses I have a little bit of pickles there from before I started canning these are kind of our condiments I grew up with uh, Mexican vanilla growing up in Texas so I have this here I actually have two jars as you can see from the price tag it's ten dollars for this big jar so I love it and every time my mom comes up in the summer I always ask her to bring me vanilla so I always have that there I have two jars plus the one upstairs a little bit of mayo with some ranch that did not fit upstairs and then just again these are just the one or two condiments that did not necessarily fit upstairs there's some hot sauce and mustard and we have a little bit of enchilada sauce and refried beans right there going down this shelf is where I can keep track of things very easily I know exactly how many are on the shelf and when something's missing I know when to restock so I have six of the larger ketchups I have four syrups four canning sprays and six oils right here this shelf is probably a year's worth right here especially the oils I just try to rotate through we use the oil a lot for popcorn and baking muffins and some different things so I just when I get a new one I put it in the back as soon as I see a gap I just know I need to add one more and then the bottom shelf and in front of it I have two going back on that shelf in there and then one stacked in front this is all apple juice the best deal I can ever find on apple juice is at Kroger for a dollar 29 now used to be 99 cents Our my kids I have four kids they go through about one bottle a week not a lot so I know that right here we that's what I figure out when I'm doing that so that is right here we have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen so that's three months supply right there of apple juice which is great because it's shelf stable and there and then going over to the other bottom shelf we have some Parmesan cheese I need to get some more of that some baked beans I had happened to stumble across canned sweet cherries for 79 cents at Kroger so about a couple jars of that I do tend to make my own pasta sauce but I think it's a great thing to have on hand so I have a couple of these Monera, marinara that did not have sugar added here's some of my crushed tomatoes I have more in other spots but this is where things fit so I have some crushed tomatoes there in the large jars then you go up and I have more of the smaller jars these are the petite diced tomatoes which is my preference in tomatoes some of the Rotel or the Kroger brand of the diced with jalapenos there's the green beans and then peanut butter and these go are stacked two up and they go three back so I have 18 jars of peanut butter right there again we go through two to three a month but then when it's Christmas time and I'm making Buckeyes I'll easily go through six so I probably need a little bit more at least one more row of those to make a full year but I just keep rotating it through on the peanut butter there and then the last shelf on this wooden shelf is applesauce this is one of the fruits my kids love so I have stocked up on this and this was one of the things I stocked up with when I had that extra money that I had set aside I bought a lot of applesauce I knew I couldn't can it so I just went ahead and we buy unsweetened applesauce for a long time it was cheaper at Aldi I've recently discovered it's cheaper to buy the three pack of Mott's unsweetened at Sam's so that's where I've started buying it from now but you'll see a lot of applesauce and we figure probably one to two jars a week of the applesauce there is what I figure so that's the shelves again right here that you see so this again is all right at the bottom of our steps when you walk down here into our basement on that wall this is where you'll see all those things the kids can run down and get it now I'm gonna take you just around the corner here you're gonna see it and I'll show you the rest of my stockpile all right we're still in the basement we're just right around the corner this is a back wall here or inside kind of under the steps we're working around our water heater and some of this is still a little bit of storage but it's these are shelves that we have gotten from Menards you can buy them lots of other places we had them in our basement at our old house and now we use them here and they do work well I like that they are so such heavy duty they can hold a lot it is plywood so they could be stronger they do start to warp after time but we've never had an issue with any of them breaking despite all the things I stack on them 
All right, so these are the shelves. Like I said, our water heater is right here too. So I'm just going to try to move you around and I'll talk you through these shelves so you can see some more of what's in my stockpile here. So let's go up way to the top and we have some dish detergent there. There's a little bit of the powder dish detergent and actually if I can turn you around on the side, you'll see I have a couple more laundry detergent right there. I have a couple canning jars up there on the top as well as our router where we store that. Um, an extra CD player we need to move out. And then these are my empty canning jars. Nothing's in those right now, just some extra canning jars I had bought at the end of the season. Some disposable white plastic forks and spoons that I use. And then this bin right here is just really what I consider our emergency bin. It has lighters, it has flashlights, it has a water pump, it has just all the basic things I started when we were start compiling things to put in there. It has extra matches. It has some canning lids, just a variety of things that I know um, if we need them in an emergency, that's where they are. It's a great way place to start. If you don't have a lot of space, you can just start a bin and start tossing things in. That was where I started. I just bought one or two things every time I was at Walmart and added them in there. So that's our emergency bin. And then moving down, you're going to see some of our pasta here. This is the spaghetti stacked up. I have a lot more pasta upstairs in our pantry. I have a little bit of Hormel chili. We don't typically eat that plain, but we do use it for some dips and different things. Then I have two shelves of sliced peaches. My kids, if they're going to do fruit, it's applesauce or sliced peaches from a can. And then we do a lot of frozen fruit actually, and they will eat it frozen um, just as is or whatever fruit is in season. So I don't have a lot of other canned fruit because this again is what we eat. I really try not to store things that our family does not eat because I do not want it to go to waste. So that's what I have for fruit. And you can choose that for your family. The next shelf right here is tomato sauce moving over and tomato paste. You can see these shelves really are, if I can show you without the shadow, they're really very deep. I think I have about 40 cans of tomato paste there and just about as many tomato sauce. They will last a long time. I use those two things. I use tomato sauce and tomato paste to make my homemade spaghetti sauce. And then I also use tomato paste when I'm canning salsa. So I have a lot of that there. And then this is still pumpkin I had stocked up on last year, and I will keep watching for a sale to restock it. The expiration is still over a year out, so I'm fine on that. We do a lot of pumpkin bread in our family. That's one of my kids' favorite breakfast, so, and I give that away a lot as a treat to teachers or different things. So I always have canned pumpkin in our, my stockpile here. And then when you move down on the very bottom shelf is where I keep our extra paper goods. So I have some paper plates of lunch size or the large dinner size, lunch size, and in the back of those hefty or just really small ones. You can see I have a large cast iron um, Dutch oven back there. And then this is my water bath canner and my pressure cooker and grandma's that I'm still using there. It works well from the 60s with her new modern guide to canning. I use that. I did just replace the seal again this year. And then just some extra cups that we have for parties here. All right, so these are these shelves again. I'll show you going up. And then I'm going to duck around the water heater and I will show you the other side. We'll start at the top and this is some long-term food storage that I do have. This is something I don't have a lot of, but I am slowly accumulating when I can find a really good deal on it. Freeze-dried is food that has all the water removed and it's packaged for you already. And they are in these number 10 cans they're called and they last for about 30 years. So this is food that we are not touching, we are not using. It is truly just up there for in case of an emergency. So I have a little bit of that up there. And then if you move down, I have some canned chicken. I bought this amazingly with that $200. This was my other big purchase, a lot of canned chicken to have some canned protein at home. 
Um, and I bought this before the prices went crazy and have almost since doubled on the canned chicken. If you are going to have a canned protein, make sure it's something that your family will eat. I was very skeptical about canned meat, and I would like to add some more eventually to our stockpile. I have a lot in our freezer, so that is where most of our meat is. Our extra freezer is basically full of meat that I buy whenever it's a sale, and I stock it up there. You can catch a view of that when I'm showing you my pantry as well to look inside the freezer. But if you are going to buy canned protein or canned chicken, this canned chicken from Sam's Club is actually very good. I was pleasantly surprised. It's all white meat. It's in big pieces and actual chunks of chicken. And it's just canned in water. And again, it has a long shelf life. It lasts three to four years. So that's a really handy thing to have in your stockpile. We will use some in dips. And then as it gets closer, I'll start using it in some of our recipes like poppy seed chicken or some different things. Our family loves black olives, the kids and I do. So we eat a lot of those. And I discovered this recently. If you look, Canned olives have an incredibly long shelf life. These were purchased in 21, and look, it's a five-year shelf life. It doesn't expire till 26. So that's amazing to find something with a shelf life that long. And again, that's just a Best Buy date, so even then it could probably go a little longer. So if you like black olives, be sure to stock up on them. I found Sam's has the best price on those, so I buy the six packs. It works out to about $1.75 a can. So I buy our black olives. And then I have a little bit of instant milk. I use that primarily for baking, um, and it is backup if I need it, but it is primarily for baking bread and some different things that I have there. A little bit of some extra wine down here. The Aldi Riesling is delicious if you've never tried it. A lot of the other cheap Aldi wine too, right there. And then we're getting down to my canned soups. And this is a section where I have the most things. And this is definitely a year of my cream of chicken soups. Probably about six months of cream of tomato. I use that mainly. We don't really eat it. It's mainly for one or two recipes that we use. So that's what it's for. But this shelf is pretty much all cream of chicken. We do not eat cream of mushroom. And then it's a couple canned chicken noodle for when kids are sick that we have that there. Here's some more petite and dice. These are the larger cans of tomatoes. A row of salsa there, some canned salsa that was a really good deal. Some honey. We do not use this regularly. Um, we use it very sporadically, um, but I know it lasts a really long time. So again, when I saw prices starting to go up, I stockpiled some honey in big jugs. Same with the maple syrup. I have one of that. My kids prefer the cheap imitation syrup. They don't really like the strong flavor of the actual real good maple syrup, but we have one there on our shelves. And then moving down, we have some more cream of chicken soup. That was part of my stockpile gift. There's 30 cans there of the Campbell's. And then here you'll see a lot more applesauce right there. Pretty much all Aldi. The yellow cans are the Mott's from Sam's, which like I said, it's now up to two 90, I think 2.99 at Aldi and Walmart, but if you break it down, it's right around 2.50 or 2.60 a jar at Sam's. So definitely the best price there. And then here you're going to see some more canned vegetables, and these are each of these cardboard trays has 12 and then they're stacked two back. So if you see that um we have corn and some green beans, a lot of corn on this side. Let's go around and just see what's actually on this other side. It looks like I have some more. Yes, these are some more tomato products of the smaller cans. So these are some diced. These are some seasoned ones with the garlic and basil, which I can use in pasta things, Italian style, and then some regular diced. Those I know too, 36 cans were part of my stockpile gift. All right, so if I move you back around, we'll back up a little. Let me show you what else I have on the bottom shelf. The bottom shelf is here. We have all my plastic wear, and it has napkins and disposable plates. I do have a huge stack of the really cheap disposable plates in my emergency bin over there, too. And then I have a bin, which is all cookie cutters and different baking things. So it's really pretty much all cookie cutters and assorted different things. 
And then under our stairs, which again, we don't have light under there, so you can't really see. I just pulled out a couple, is where I keep all my buckets. Now, this is where you're going to find things like, um, I have, well, let's just go through this. So I have a three gallon bucket size from, it's a food safe bucket. It is not Kilwin's ice cream, unfortunately, but it is popcorn in this one. I have a couple bins and most are sealed in plastic bags. I have a little bit of mylar. I really have not gotten into mylar because we are pretty much using everything that we have. But we had bought a 50 pound bag of popcorn, which is about a year's supply. We eat popcorn at least once a week on Sunday night dinner a lot of times. Um, my kids love popcorn. So I think I have three of these Kill Ones ones filled up. Again, they're a food grade bucket. So I feel great having those. And then I had bought several five gallon buckets before I started getting those. And those are where I keep all my extra sugar and flour and baked goods. I just, I have not written on the buckets because I want to be able to reuse them. And I like them looking neat, but I have them all labeled on the top on painter's tape and then on the side so I can easily see. So this one's a sugar bucket and I'll just go ahead. I have most of them in the regular lids here because they seal nice and tight. And so then in each of these, I have, you can see seven, um, seven times four, so 28. I figure I always keep about 25 pounds of sugar, I figure, in one of these. So I have 28 of the small, or if I do some of the bigger bags, then I tend to have 20 in them. My goal is to have um, about three of these of sugar, probably, would three to four of those of sugar. Sugar does not go bad, even if it gets harder. It really lasts a long time and you can just break it up and it will still be good. So it's all sealed up. I have several of those. I have one bin of these of brown sugar. We do go through that with a little bit of powdered sugar, but it's pretty much brown sugar and sugar that I store and I rotate through that. And then I worked out the numbers and I filled these buckets. I do bake bread for our own family. And so I have a very simple recipe for that. And I figured out that if I am baking bread every week and baking, if I needed to bake bread for us to eat every week using my recipe and doing other baked goods, we would use about 25 pounds of flour a month. So I just multiplied that out knowing Again, baking bread, baking muffins, baking cookies, baking other things. And I started stockpiling and filling bins. One of these bins, I figured, can hold about 25 pounds of flour. If you're doing it in either a small bin, um, in small bags, you can easily fit five of them in here. Or you could do one big 25-pound bag. I've done that with sugar before when I bought a big bag. And it does fit in here very nicely. I have used a couple of the screw-off lids. I actually don't prefer them. They are very convenient to get in, but they are next to impossible for myself or my husband to get on. We've gotten three on and they will never come off again. Um, so we just pretty much stick to the cheaper lids. They seal very, very tight. You really, and you have to pull on them, but they're easy to get off. We had bought all our buckets at Menards with the lids. So this really is my stockpile, like I said. You can see those shelves over here and around the corner. And that's what I have down here. Let me flip you around and we'll talk a little bit more before I wrap this up. Well, there you have it. That's a peek inside my stockpile. Did it answer all your questions or do you have more for me? If you do, please leave them in the comments below and ask questions. I'd be happy to answer anything that you have or if there's something you didn't see and you want to know more about, let me know that too and I'll answer as best as I can. Here's a couple more things I just realized I forgot to mention. On those buckets that you saw down there, especially the five gallon buckets, you saw that painter's tape and they had a number. That number is actually how I keep track of what is my most current bucket. And then I just number them out. So like if I have three things of sugar, it'll say sugar one, sugar two, sugar three. And then I'm using from the first and I refill and put them in the back as I fill it up and rotate through. For sugar and flour and those type of things in brown sugar, I keep them in original packages. Again, I told you I don't really do mylar. This is all stuff we are constantly using and rotating through. So I'm not trying to store things for 30 years other than any of that long-term things I have purchased, which are already prepared for me. So I just leave those in regular packages, put them in the buckets, number them, and cycle through. Um, then water. I've mentioned before how important water is. 
And remember, you really are supposed to have at minimum a three-day supply for your family, one gallon per person per day, but the ideal goal is two weeks. So our water is pretty much stored in the, um, the individual water bottles, which come in the 40 pack from Sam's that equals five gallons. And so I've chosen to do it that way pretty much because I can stock them up and they are stored under the steps as well with our buckets. And that's just there. I easily rotate them through. We do have some of that water in the canning jars. Like I showed you, I have a couple five gallon buckets. So variety. And then I actually do all those apple juice containers. I rinse them out and clean them out, fill them with water and put them under our sinks. And every sink in every bathroom has at least two gallons, which would be four containers of water, just again to use if our, we lose our power and to flush toilets. It happened earlier this year and I was very thankful I had stored that. So make water a priority and make sure you're storing that as well. All right, like I said, this is it. This is a real stockpile built very frugally. I have done this all on my budget, you guys. Like I said, you can do this. It's taken me time, but I've been very intentional. Slow and steady wins the race. Just make those lists, figure out what you're doing, and start adding those things to your weekly shopping trip. Instead of buying one thing that's on sale, you know, buy three or four and add it to your stockpile. You'll be amazed how quickly it adds up. Consider just buying five items a week or spending the $5 a week. I have videos on that. I have free checklists for you. I really think having a stockpile is so important for everyone. Not only is it a practical emergency fund for you, but it will save you so much money and time. When I'm out of anything, I just run down here to the basement and grab what I need. It's like having my own grocery store in the basement, and I love it. I love that I have this convenience. If I need to prepare a meal for friends, I have stuff right here on hand. I don't have to go out to the store for a special trip. Same thing if we're spontaneously entertaining. I have what I need. A stockpile is so helpful in so many different ways. All right, I know this was a lot and I do hope it was helpful. Again, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to chat with you there more. I'll leave links to all the other videos that I've mentioned, as well as um, some links to the buckets and the shelves and those different things that I do use down here. So you can check all of those things out. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and join me for more videos on stockpiling. And if you want to see how I'm adding to my budget, I do share a frugal grocery haul every Thursday. So join me then and I will show you what I am buying for us to use that week and to add and replenish our stockpile. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next video.